Father, oh, how sweet it is to trust in you. Lord, we're not looking to the left or to the right, but Lord, we're looking up tonight. You are the rock that we lean on. You are the one that we trust in tonight. And Father, as one of your ministers of the word of God, I speak the name of Jesus over everyone that is tuned in tonight that's watching. Father, I pray that they would have a divine encounter with you through maybe a, a word that I speak or a scripture that I read tonight, God, that would just pierce through into their inner parts, into the depths of their heart tonight, God. And Father, turn what has been working against them, turn it into their favor, and to get you would get glory and honor and praise. Father God, we look to you, the Bible says, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, the one who has begun a good work in us, Lord, you will be faithful to complete it. And just like that said, you are all we need. You're more than enough, and we give you all glory and praise. We pray in Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. We want to welcome you this evening at our 6 o'clock service here at Jesus is Lord Ministries, just west of Gettysburg near Cashtown. We've been having three services a day, and it's always a joy to stand in the pulpit here for Pastor Mike Yeager and the church family here. Uh, my wife and I attend here Sunday evenings when we're not out ministering. Uh, we do have our own ministry called Above and Beyond Ministry, where we travel the region ministering the Word of God, encouraging people in the Lord, and maybe tonight you're tuned in and you say, you know, Pastor, I could use a little encouragement. Well, I believe I've got a word for you tonight. I have a, a message. It's uh, one word. Remember. Remember. When you find yourself between a rock and a hard place, remember. What do you mean, Pastor? Remember that God is there with you. When your faith is tested, remember God and reach out to Him and touch Him. You know, a lot of people have the idea that when you get born again, all of your problems uh, fade away, you won't have problems, but that's not true. You know, the Bible speaks a lot about the testing of our faith. But you know, it's not meant to destroy us, but it's meant to strengthen us in our walk with the Lord. And I, I want to share, I have several scriptures I want to share with you tonight, but as I open tonight, if you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to the book of James chapter 1, the writing of the Apostle James. And beginning in verse 2, he spoke a word here that I know the first time or two that I read it, I thought, that's strange. James said, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. I, I believe if you really study the New Testament, especially the book of Acts and the epistles that Paul wrote, you're going to find that every one of those men that helped write the, the epistles were men that were tested constantly. You know, when you receive Jesus Christ into your life, uh, you get a bullseye painted on you because the enemy now targets you because you become an enemy uh, of, God, uh, of the, the God of this world. And he is, his desire is because he lost you, he wants to take you back again. But I thank God tonight that... Uh, the Lord has given us everything we need that when those testing come, remember, remember who God is in your life. The Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse 33. Jesus spoke this verse here. He said, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you would, may have peace in this world. You will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And you know the wonderful part about it, because he has overcome, he gives you and I the power to overcome also all the obstacles of the enemy. And when it comes to warfare, probably one of the greatest scriptures that I could share with you tonight is the writings of the Apostle Paul in the book of Ephesians chapter 6. I'm only going to read a few verses of it because this... Uh, 
part of this chapter here is a whole sermon in itself when it talks about the armor of God. But Paul begins in verse 10 where he says, Finally, my brethren, he's speaking to the church. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Just remember that. Those that are tempting you, those that are coming after you are not your enemy, but it's the one who is influencing them. And that's what Paul is saying here. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. When Satan was cast out of heaven because of his rebellion against God, he was cast down into what they call the second heaven, which is the atmosphere between earth and the third heaven where God dwells. And he, he went on to say here, therefore, in verse 13, therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. I encourage you with that tonight. Whatever you're going through, stand, stand up. Don't allow it to hold you down or to weigh you down, but stand in the strength of the Lord, as Paul said there in verse 10. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Testing comes to all of us. It's not if it comes, but when it comes. And usually when testing comes, it happens at the most inopportune time in our life. Many times we find ourselves unprepared for the battles and the testings that come our way. But we're tested in every area of our life. Spiritually, we call it spiritual warfare. Uh, just what I read to you, that's what Paul was talking about here. Uh, we're, we're warring in the spirit realm, but testing also comes many times physically where we face afflictions in our physical body. It could be sickness, uh, many kinds of different diseases. T testing can come emotionally. And boy, is it ever a, a, a thing today in the world that we're living with, in with all the change that is taking place and the majority of the change that the world is experiencing is taking the world deeper into the darkness of the things of the enemy. And many people are operating with a spirit of fear and depression. And again, I just want to say, if you're battling fear and depression tonight, here it is. Remember what is written in Timothy when Paul said to Timothy that God does not give you a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. Fear does not come from God. I began reading a book, and I probably will put a few messages together about the fear of the Lord. And this is not a fear that's a scary fear, but it's a reverential respect and fear of God and how great and how awesome He is. And then there comes the testings in our relationships. Uh, many times uh, in ministry, I've had to deal with issues in people's families where there was difficulty, maybe between a husband and wife or between parents and children where the enemy wants to get in between them and create discord and, and, and things happen there. And then finally, we have testings many times in the realm of finances and material things where a lot of times, I don't know how it is in your life, but I know there's been times we often use the statement, when it rains, it pours. You know, the car broke down, the dishwasher quit working, and just different things that doesn't, that all seems to want to happen at one time. And, uh, and many times, it, again, it creates turmoil in our life and, and things. But tonight, I, I want to look at some scriptures here, and then I'm going to get into the main part of my, my teaching tonight. But in an Isaiah chapter 43, the prophet Isaiah penned these words under the unction of the Holy Spirit. He said, But now thus saith the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. I just want to stop there for a moment. I wonder if you've ever had a time where you were doing something, there was no one around, and you could have declared you heard somebody call your name. I've had that happen to me on several occasions. The first time or two was a little bit 
a little bit scary. It's like, what in the world's going on here? And then I realized that God was calling my name. And he will do that. Many times you will hear that. And, and it's God trying to get your attention. But I believe that's what the, the Lord's talking about here when he was speaking through Isaiah. And here's what he said in verse 2. And, and this is where many times we don't understand, but we go through these kind of places. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. That means when storms come, read the Bible, read about the disciples out on the, the, the Sea of Galilee, Jesus in the boat, but the storm still came. But he said, I will be with you. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. When I read that scripture, I think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were cast into the fiery furnace, which should have destroyed them. But the Bible says that when they come out of there, they didn't even smell like smoke. They come out, their garments were just as good as they were when they were thrown in. But the neat part of it was, and there again, God affirmed his word. They remembered God's promise to them. And that fourth man, I believe, was Christ himself that showed up in that fire, that when they walked through the fire, it did not even scorch them. And he went on to say in verse 8, For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom and Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Regardless of what area you're being tested in tonight, church family, remember God. Remember to turn to him. Don't make him the last resort. Make him the first place you turn to when troubles come. Remember the promises that God has given you personally. Maybe you've got prophetic words that uh, someone spoke over you that were from the Lord that have yet to be fulfilled. Because many times when the trials get heavy, we want to quit and give up and say, well, this is the end. I'm going to die. My life is over. When you get to that place, remember God's promises to you. And more than that, remember God's written word that has over 7,000 promises that are there for you to be a partaker of. Today I want to look at one of God's mighty men in the Bible in the Old Testament whose name was Joshua. Joshua was about to undertake the greatest task, the most difficult assignment of his life. He had been with Moses and had been his right-hand man for 40 years. And he was now taking over because Moses died. Joshua was battle-tested and knew how to overcome obstacles. He was a warrior who fought many battles over the years under Moses' leadership. But when he was about to undertake this task that was ahead of him, it was greater than any other task that he had ever taken Upon himself. Life was going to be different now. There'd be no more pillar of cloud by day after they crossed over the Jordan River. There would be no more fire by night, no more manna every morning. They were going to have to learn to, to grow crops and feed themselves. In fact, they could, the Lord told them that they would be able to feed off of the land that He was getting ready to give them. And there was enemies that they were going to fight from within and without. Joshua chapter 1, if you again turn there with me, and I just want to read the first nine verses with you, and then we'll delve into it. After the death of Moses, the servant of God, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, My servant Moses is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving them, the children of Israel." Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I have said to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man, listen to this, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. There is it is again. If there's ever one promise that you need to remember, remember God's promise that I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. That wasn't just for Joshua. 
It wasn't just for the disciples, but it is a promise to you and I tonight that God is right there. Whatever you're going through right now, whatever the testing or the battle is, remember that God's presence is right there with you. Call upon Him tonight. Reach out to Him. He's there to help you. Let's read on here. No man shall be able to stand against you. Verse 6, be strong. Here it is. I want you to take notice how many times God said to Joshua, be strong and of good courage. For this people you shall divide as an inheritance in the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very, not just courageous, but very courageous. You see, God knew what lie ahead. God knew what was in the land and the things that they were going to have to deal with. And, and he was telling Joshua, build yourself up now. Don't wait till the battle comes. Don't wait till the testing comes. But get strong in the Lord ahead of times and remain strong in Him. Verse 7, only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. There it is again. The Lord repeated himself. Reminding Joshua to obey the law, follow after the word of God. That's what he was talking about, was the word of God. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you. Say it with me, wherever. Say wherever. Wherever you go. And then on down in verse 18, here it is again, that same statement, be strong and courageous. How many of you know when God repeats something, he's trying to get a point across? And he repeated it four times to Joshua because he knew what was coming. Real quickly tonight, I want to give you five things to remember. Five things to remember. If you've got a pen and a paper there, write these things down, and I believe it will be a help to you in the days ahead. Number one, remember that God is faithful. God will always be faithful. God will never forsake you. He will never go against His Word. It says here in Joshua chapter 1, verse 5, I read it to you, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. I'm going to give you my version of that. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, as I was with Joshua, as I was with Paul and Peter and the disciples, so I will be with you and I will never leave you nor forsake you. God is speaking that promise into your heart and life right now. Remember, remember that promise. God has promised Abraham years before, that his descendants would dwell in the land, and now under Joshua's leadership, God was about to fulfill his promise. Hebrews 10, 23 says, Let us hold fast the confession of our faith without wavering, for he who is promised is faithful. Say this with me, God is faithful. God is faithful. 1 Thessalonians 5, 24, He who calls you is faithful. Who is also, who also will do it. Whatever God's promised you, it may not have come yet. Be patient, wait upon it. That's what, what uh, James said there. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations and trials. Be patient. It's working patience in your life. Remember his promises in his word. The Bible says, are yea and amen. That means they will not fail you. But they are also conditional on you and I being obedient to follow the Lord. You can't live a double standard life and expect God to, to fulfill his promises to you. Joshua was sold out to the Lord. He was not looking anywhere else to anyone else, but he was looking to God. And we need to do that same thing. Number two. Number two, not only remember God is faithful. Number two, remember to be strong and courageous. We need to get rid of our wimpy spirits. 
You know, sometimes when the devil goes boo, we run and turn the other way and run and hide. That happened in the Bible when uh, the army of Israel was facing the battle of the, with the Philistines and the giant Goliath come out every day for 40 days and taunted them. And they ran in fear until a young shepherd boy named David showed up. And David said, I'll take him down. And you know, you can read it for yourself what happened. But remember to be strong and courageous. I want to remind you again, I said it to you a while ago, four times in that first chapter of Joshua, God said to Joshua, be strong and courageous. This will be necessary, a necessary part not only of Joshua's life, but it's going to be necessary in your life and in my life in the day and the hour that we live in the world that we're living in. God himself inspired and encouraged Joshua for the people that he was leading lack faith. Now you got to remember 40 years earlier, Joshua and Caleb were part of the 12 spies that went in the land. But 10 spies come back with a bad report. They saw themselves as grasshoppers in the eyes of the enemy. That doesn't mean the enemy saw them that way, but that's how they saw themselves. And Joshua had to break that kind of a spirit off of the people, and it was going to be a task for him. But now Joshua, along with Caleb, his compadre, were finally ready to go in and possess the land, but it was going to require strength and courage like never before. Remember, not everybody around you may be ready to go with you where God is leading you. And that was one of the things I talked about earlier when I said many times there's warfare, there's trials in our relationships with people. Many times people want to monopolize your life. They want to tell you how they think you should live your life. But we live according to the promises of God, the Word of God, and what He has instilled in our hearts and lives. Number three... Remember to trust in God's Word. You can never get too much of the Word of God in your life. Joshua 1.8, again, he said here, This book of the law that they had shall not depart from your mouth. What's that mean? It, it means you've got to speak it. It, it it's not, He didn't say it shall not depart from your mind, but he said it will not depart from your mouth. You've got to learn to verbalize and speak out the Word of God. In my teachings and ministry, my wife and I, in dealing with people and problems, we tell them the devil cannot read your mind. But God has given you power and authority to speak the Word of God, to speak it out loud. Speak with the authority that's in the Word. Speak with the power of the Holy Spirit that God has given you. He said here, The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. That means... Read the Bible every day. You know, I, I can hear it already. I, I, you, Pastor, you don't know how busy I am. I, I work a lot of hours a day, and then when I get home, I'm tired, and i got things to do at home. I don't have time to read the Word. Friend, you need to take time. You need to make time. The Word is your two-edged sword that God has given you as a weapon to destroy the works of the enemy. And if you don't pick up that sword every day and apply it, then there's no wonder you're going through the hard places that you're going through. For then, he said, you will make your way prosperous. You will make your way. Not God. You will make your way prosperous by a be, being obedient to the Word of God. And then you will have good success. Now, I don't think there's any of us that does not want to be successful in our life, in every area, spirit, soul, and body. We want to be strong in our spirit and in our soul, but we want to be strong in our physical body. And, you know, we, we go to the gym and work out, or we work out at home to strengthen our body. But, friend, when you pray every day, when you read the Word of God every day, it's really strengthening you and strengthening God's presence in your life. Joshua had now had God's orders first hand to make absolutely sure to obey and to follow the Word of God every step of the way. Remember when we are facing extraordinary circumstances and our faith is being tested, it's important to stay under the authority of the Word of God. Stay under the shadow of the covering of the feathers of His wings. It's a safe place. Read Psalm 91. It's a place where God has prepared for you and I to abide. 
Beside God's written word, what other prophetic promises has God given you that are important to you? The Bible says, talking about the word of God, he said in Matthew 24, 35, that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Number four, remember to stay focused on the Lord. Keep your eyes on God, whatever you're going through. The problem develops when we totally focus on the problem and not the God that can fix the problem in our life. Get your eyes off of the circumstances. Get your eyes on God and begin to dwell on Him. Joshua 3, 3 and 4. And they commanded the people in Joshua chapter 3, and listen to this, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the priests, the Levites bearing it, then you shall set out from the place you are and go after it. They're getting ready. This is two chapters later. They're getting ready to cross over. In that day, the Ark of the Covenant, that box of gold with the, the seraphim uh, facing each other on it, that the priest would pick it up and carry it. But it represented the manifest presence of God in that day. And what God was saying, he said, command the people, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of your God and the priests and the Levites bearing it, then you shall set forth from your place and go after. Go after God, church. Go after God and what you're dealing with. Yet there shall be a space between you and it of about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it that you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way before. Friend, I, I, I don't even want to stray into a rabbit trail here tonight, but where God is preparing to take you and I in the realm of His Spirit, in the world that we're living in, we've never been this way before. We're, we don't have testimonies right now of what the future is going to look like, but I believe that as we keep our eyes fixed on God and follow hard after Him, that we will one day have a testimony, that we can look back here on, in June of, of 2023 and say, look what God did during that month of June and July and August of the summer of 2023. I believe with all of my heart that we are going to see some great and mighty things during these hot summer months because I believe the fire of God is going to get released upon the people of God to do great and mighty things. And they, they were preparing to cross the Jordan River. And if you will study the Bible, the Jordan River at that season was at flood stage. Now in the natural, it was not possible for them to swim across. But God was about to do another miracle just like He did at the Red Sea. The Bible says that when those priests carrying that Ark of the Covenant, when they stepped their feet into the water, the Bible says again, as it did at the Red Sea, the waters passed and they crossed over on dry ground. They were told to move when it moved and to stop when it stopped. Friend, we need to learn that lesson too. When God tells you to stop, then stop. Pause. Wait upon the Lord. You know, that's what Isaiah said. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Learn to wait upon Him. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Exodus 33, 13 to 15. It says, Now, therefore, I pray, I have found grace in your sight. Show me your way, that I may know you, and that I may find grace in your sight, and consider that this nation is your people. And he said, My presence will go before you, and I will give you rest. Then he said, If your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. He was speaking to Moses in that day. He was speaking to Moses, and, and Moses said, Lord, if you're not going to go with us, then don't take us anywhere. We're not going. I think that needs to be our heart and our attitude today. God, if you're not in this, if you're not in this decision that I'm about to make, where am I, I'm about to be led, then I don't want to go because I want to be where your presence is. There may be times when we may lose heart and lose faith because we get our eyes on our circumstances and the things that are happening around us, and on people who betray and fail us. 
I want to share a couple things I wrote down here tonight regarding where we are today as a church. The church is at a turning point. I believe the church in America is at a crossroads where we need to choose. We need to choose to follow God where He's leading. We can choose our way, the way that's familiar, or we can choose God's way, a way that we have never yet been on before. But if we choose not to move in obedience to the Lord in His command, another generation will die in the wilderness. You know what I do? I'm in my senior years, but what I do is not so much for me anymore, but it's for my children and my grandchildren. It's for the generations that are coming up behind me. I want to be able to hand them a, a, a country, a nation that is still a nation that honors and serves God. But church, if we don't stand up and if we don't make a difference, our loved ones are going to suffer because we failed to do our part that God has given us to do. Are we going to please God or are we going to please man or the flesh? There, there will be consequences. Choose this day whom you will serve. That's what he, Moses said. For me and my house, that was Joshua. For me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Get your eyes on the Lord. Remember His promises to you. There's been too much compromise as individuals. There's been too much compromise as, as churches, as denominations who have given in to the ways of the world. And I, I say to you tonight, if, if you have been one of those that have compromised your faith, repent of it and get back to where you need to be in your service to the Lord. Quit telling God how to run His church and get your eyes and heart on what He wants to do and be obedient to Him. This is why it's important to continually focus on the Lord, His Word, His prophetic promises. He will not abandon and He will not fail you in this hour. You know, He said in 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, If my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Psalm 37, 23, it says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. Do you delight in the way of the Lord tonight? Do you love serving God? Do you love following after the way that he's leading you? Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. Yeah, there it is again. There's going to be those things that's going to want to trip you up. None of us are immune to them. Believe me, I can tell you times tonight where... I, I made mistakes, I made bad choices, and I stumbled. But God was there to pick me up. He's there to pick you up tonight. David said these words in verse 25, I have been young and now I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6 says, Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me. Say that with me. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me. Some of you may be facing difficult situations and circumstances right now, and they appear to be insurmountable. But oh, let me encourage you tonight. Remember, Remember the Lord. In spite of all that you are facing or may face, the same God who parted that Jordan River for Joshua and the people of Israel who caused the walls of Jericho just a few days later to come crumbling down, who led Israel to victory over the inhabitants of the land, is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's an unchanging God. He is a faithful God. Get your eyes fixed on Him tonight. Remember, remember these promises He's given you. And finally, number five, remember God gives us victory over the enemies that we face. Joshua chapter 6, you can read that whole chapter there of the battles that they won. Immediately after crossing the Jordan River, the first obstacle was the city of Jericho. It won't take long for opposition to appear when you begin to move with God. The enemy wants to block the path that you're in. And Jericho was the first obstacle that Joshua and the children of Israel faced. But if you read the story, 
Again, they had to be obedient to the Lord. God gave Joshua the command to march around that city one time a day for six days. And then he said, on that seventh day, I want you to march around those walls seven times. And he said, when you get to the end of that seventh time around, have them blow the trumpets and the shofars and lift up a shout. Lift up a shout, and when they lifted up a shout, it's just shout went up as the glory of God began to fall, and the walls of that city literally crumbled to the ground. Some people say that, that those walls sunk down into the ground. I don't know. One way or the other, they come down, and they were able to conquer the city of Jericho by being obedient. There it is. God gives, gave them the victory over the enemy that stood before them. I, I would encourage you to read how fortified that city was, how thick that they said chariots could ride side by side on top of that wall. And it was high, it was thick, and, and in natural terms it was impenetrable. But God, but God brought those walls down as they did what God told them to do. How many of you know tonight God is a God that will help you? God is a God that will fight your battles for you. He will give you the strategies that you need. Many times in the Bible, God told the, the children of Israel, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Other times he said, the battle belongs to me. The battle belongs to the Lord. You know what the enemy is fighting you to get to God. And the battle belongs to the Lord. Give it to him tonight. Let God fight that battle for you. Or maybe he'll give you strategies to fight it. But don't try to do it on your own. We all deal with issues on a daily basis. And may not be, it may not be a walled city. It may not be a flooded river. It may not be an enemy army. But it may be those emotional things that rise up. It may be that worry, that fear of the, of the unknown, the uncertainty of things that are happening in the world around you. Worry, fear, anxiety, depression, loneliness, despair, sickness. All those areas I read as I began began tonight in the spiritual realm, the physical realm, the emotional realm. Battles come in relationships. Be, remember what God has promised. Jericho stands for all those things that we can, can't overcome on our own, that God will bring them down. God will destroy the works of the enemy in your life if you will turn to him tonight. Look to him. Say, God, I need you. And, and listen, you don't have to give God great details of what you're going through. I can assure you tonight the God that sees everything, the God knows that everything, sees where you are, knows what you're going through. And all he's waiting for from you tonight is for you to call out to him and cry out to him and say, God, I need you. I speak the name of Jesus over my circumstances tonight. Remember, God has a solution to all of our problems, and he works many times in unconventional ways. God may do strange things. God may ask you to do strange things that in the natural seem silly. But God took the foolish things to confound the wise, and God will do it again, and God will do it in your life and in my life. He may ask you to do some things that that you, you may question, but I encourage you, if you know it's God speaking to you, do it. Follow His commands. I love what it says in Zechariah 4, 6. So He answered and He said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. It's not by might, and it's not by power, but it's by my Spirit, saith the Lord. As I said earlier, the battles, the majority of the battle that you and I are facing is a spiritual battle where the enemy has come to seek, to steal, to kill, and destroy. But in the midst of the enemy's actions, the Bible says that Jesus has come to give us life and that life more abundantly. Oh, how wonderful it is that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that God raises a standard up against him and gives us victory. We overcome, church family, because he, Christ, has already overcome all the works of the enemy. When Christ died and he descended down into the depths of the earth, it says he took back the keys of death, hell, and the grave. He took away the sting of death. And he gave us and has given us eternal life in the Lord. 
As I close this evening, I want to again remind you of these five things. Five things to remember. Number one, remember that God is faithful to His promises. Number two, remember to be strong and of good courage in the Lord. Number three, remember to trust God's Word and to obey it. Number four, stay. remember to stay focused. Remember to keep your eyes. You know, I, I, I so often hear that scripture in my own spirit. Look beyond the hills. That, that, means, that, that means you don't look at the ground. You don't look down, but you look up. Look beyond the hills from whence our help cometh. Our help cometh from the Lord. Reach up tonight. You know, I, I love doing that. Pastor Mike does it a lot here. Reach up and grab that. Reach up and grab the promises of God tonight. Every one of them. They belong to you as a child of God. And oh, how many of us are living far below our inheritance in the Lord. I say it's time that we begin to grab a hold of what God has provided for us. I, I, I wonder, when I, I think about there being 7,000 promises in the Word of God that He's made available. But how many of them, think about it tonight, how many of those promises, for you that know the Word of God, how many of those promises have you become a partaker of? Go after God tonight. Not just for His promises. Go after Him because of who He is. Go after Him for His presence. And the wonderful thing is that God will continually add more and more to your life of Him and His presence and His his promises to you. And number five, remember God gives us the victory over every enemy that we face. I want to pray with you before I, I close the service tonight. If you would bow your heads with me in prayer. Maybe, maybe you're out there tonight and you say, Pastor, I, I, I'm not really serving God. I really don't know Him as my Lord and Savior. Well, uh, you can know Him right now. You, you don't have to wait till you get to a church on Sunday to do that, you can receive Christ wherever you are right now. Just bow your head and pray this very simple prayer. All you got to do is believe that God sent His Son into the world, that He died on a cross, and on that third day after being buried, He rose from that grave and then ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. Just say this, pray this with me. Say, Dear Lord, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin and be the Lord of my life. I give you not only my life, but I give you all my problems tonight that I've been unable to solve. And Lord, I look to you for help and for strength. Thank you for saving me, and thank you already for beginning to turn my circumstances around and being the Lord of my life. I pray in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I thank you for those that prayed that prayer. And Father, I come into agreement. You said we're two or three agreed together. Father, I come into agreement with every one of those that is praying right now that is facing difficult circumstances. You're the God that can take what the enemy meant for naught and turn it around, what was meant for evil, and bring good out of it. And Father, right now, I break the stronghold of the enemy off of their lives in the authority of Jesus' name. Turn it around, God. Turn it around right now. Everything that seemed to be working against them, God, do a suddenly. God, show up in a suddenly in their life, Father God, that, Lord, when they wake up tomorrow morning, what was there opposing them today, just like that wall of Jericho, in a moment of time, when they lifted up a shout, what had been an obstacle that kept them from the victory was gone in a moment, in a suddenly of God. And Father, I pray for suddenlies in their life. Father, draw them close to you. Father God, bring them into a deeper relationship with you, Father God. And Lord, I pray that they will remember this message and remember the title of it. Remember, remember God, remember his promise to you to never leave you nor forsake you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget tomorrow, 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 6 o'clock, there will be services here in the sanctuary. Once again, if you live in the area and you want to stop in for any of these services, Pastor Mike would be more than happy to have you come and be part of it. But if not, we look forward to meeting with you again the next time the church doors are open. God bless and thank you.